Hi, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Victory Road, where you get to see the greatest of celebrities and real people right here telling their victory stories. And I always like to open up with Isaiah 35, verse 8 through 10. It talks about a highway of holiness, that only the pure and the holy and the righteous are able to walk on this. And when you're in the middle of your Victory Road, when you're walking on this holy path, great things happen miracles happen, surprises and blessings happen. So let's just take a look, come on in and listen to our fabulous, wonderful guest in their next victory story. You're gonna be blessed. Victory Road. Everybody has a story to tell. To tell. How you got to heaven when you came from hell. Victory Road. Hi, I'm here with the one and only Chucky Perez. This man does it all. He's an actor, he is a producer, he's a host, TV host, comedian, musician. Taco maker. Oh my goodness, he just shakes it up and does it all. And he has a funny, funny show. And uh, help me welcome this wonderful, funny <laughs> Thanks. man. Thanks. Great. <laughs> Even though he's funny, he's so talented. Yeah. So let me tell you what. I've watched you, and your show rocks. Oh, you thank are you. so amazing. And I've heard thank your you voice. So I heard you sing. And, you know, they've shown clips of you yeah. singing. Yeah. And so did you start your whole career singing as a musician first? I, that's what I did first. I, I actually... Uh, before the acting. Before the acting, before TV show. Everybody thinks I'm a comedian now. <laughs> I'm not a comedian. I guess. Well, it says comedian yeah, in your credit. Yeah, Because so you're I'll a funny take, man. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess that I'll take it. That means you can it. do it all. Yeah, uh, but I was actually a serious recording artist, and now I messed up my recording career by doing comedy. So um, I'm just what? playing. I didn't mess. <laughs> what? See, you're funny. <laughs> no, no. Seriously, I was I was singing, and one of these Christian networks. Uh, I knew some people, and they they would play my music videos, and I would tour and did all those Christian music festivals and release record. My first record was with um, Maranatha Music. Maranatha. So yeah, not to date myself, but I was I was uh, no, on the, I remember that on the youth uh, label at the time. That's cool. And one of the first artists out there doing that, doing like R and B and hip hop and all this stuff, and um, and through the years, this network would take notice, played my music videos. And all of a sudden, I get a call and said, hey, come on down for an interview. I went and did the interview, and then they somehow thought I had a TV show. And they said, uh, do you have your show with you? <laughs> and I said, I can have it in three weeks. <laughs> and I, said, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so I walked up, and my wife goes, what TV show do you have? That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> True that story. is hilarious. She said, what TV show do you have? And I said, I don't know. i got to come up with a TV show now. <laughs> so we're driving. <laughs> We're driving down the freeway, and I thought, what's what's kind of lacking is, you know, I always joked around, I was always a prankster, and so I thought, it's kind of lacking is the church doesn't laugh anymore. I know. You know? Everything's so serious. P politics is so serious. Everything's so serious and mean. Yeah. And I said, we need to make everybody laugh. That's true. So God gave me an idea, and it, you know it's a God thing when it all comes together. And I called some, I, I, I knew some camera guys that had a little studio, and I said, let's shoot a pilot. I called Brian Duncan, who's a friend of mine. I don't know if you know Brian. But mm -mm. Brian, uh, big gospel artist, uh, he's in the I've Hall of Fame. The name. Yeah, uh, Sweet Comfort Band, that was his band. But he, uh, he said, yeah, man, he, you know, he talks like this. And he said, hey, I could be your late night. And I said, man, I need you to be that late night band guy. So he goes, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, oh, okay, well, I'll give it a shot. Kinda like you know? the wingman yeah, to that's you. Like that. So, yeah, so he's kind of like And he the, became that. He became that. And um, we did the show, and I started, it's funny, I've never written a monologue before. So, but I was, you know, I'm a quick thinker. You know, you're a creative yeah, mind, so you can yeah. think pretty witty. So I thought that's what really a monologue is, is being witty, you know, with, uh, with current events. So I wrote my monologue. I wrote skits. I started thinking. It's, I loved it because all my creative juices came out. And then I thought, oh, man, I got to actually host the show. <laughs> and that's a whole nother thing because <laughs> you, you actually, yeah. when you host a show, you're not supposed to talk so much. You yeah. kind of just let them talk like you're doing a wonderful yeah. job right now. Thank you. You know, and you can tell it took me to like, I got to calm down, let them talk. Yeah. So that's anyway. So that's kind of whole the whole thing started, you know, and ever since then, we've done quite a few episodes and we're going into season three. And um, 
uh, my good friend Isaac here at, at Isaac Hernandez. At, yes, Isaac Hernandez. I love Isaac. He's, he's the one that turned me on to Uplift. Yes, he's, he's and amazing. we're good friends. And he said, "Man, we want that show over here." Isaac and has a good eye for the talent. Rest is, yeah, he does. It and was for all good God. looks. He knows good looking he, people. This is true. He, he knows found good both looking of people. Us. So he we said, love you, Isaac. You're good looking. You need to be on TV. And I said, Thank you. So, anyways, but no, seriously. Listen, so, so now, <laughs> see, you are doggone funny. Let me tell you why. He is a comedian. I know he's an actor and a an talented musician and everything. And very producer. spiritual, too. Very, and very, very spiritual. serious, spiritual, too. Very serious. We're serious here. <laughs> yes, we are. But literally, you have a cool way of presenting the gospel, the facts, the way of Jesus Yes. in a cool, fun way. And people will look at your show and they'll watch your show over other talking heads because you're not just talking heads. You do funny sketches you of your show. You know what I wanted to do was I didn't want to do a Christian show. That's I know that thing. sounds bad. I didn't want a Christian show. I didn't want a church show. I just wanted a clean family show. A fun show. I wanted yeah. something to laugh at. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a what lot you've of done. You have created TV, that. I want you to night know. TV. Oh, thank you so much. You you're have so achieved sweet. that, my brother. Thank you. So, anyway, so that's kind of what we're doing. We're just kind of, we, you know, we do skip. We do one on, um, you know, the racial tensions were so bad, uh, you know, for years, a couple years ago, uh, with uh, <laughs> black and white and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And I, so I thought, well, how can we kind of make everybody chill? Yeah. So we have this one. It's called Dark Justice, and a couple of my big African American brothers on the show. <laughs> They uh, they go. We made a, a, a coming to TV, you know, you know, dark justice, and all they do is arrest white people <laughs> for no reason at all. <laughs> I love it. And so That's cute. <laughs> this That's is a fun funny. thing, you know. So it's like I like just the to twist. Kind of laugh. We need to laugh at each other. Yeah. You know, we need to laugh at ourselves. And you do. You know. And when I so watch I make you, fun I go, myself, "This guy yeah. is just. You've got it. Yeah. You're you're all the things, and it's so amazing what God is doing through you. Thank you. And thank Praise you God. for making us laugh. Thank you so much. And so. I know you're working on another project, and they're telling me to wrap it up. Do you want to plug uh, the process? I got, I got a new, I believe it, because I'm a musician. I got a new CD coming out called Beautiful okay. that'll be in stores late summer. Okay. And then I have a new television show I'm producing called The Process, which goes behind the scenes of in the music business. Tells how the making of a CD happens, making of a project. So that's Beautiful. What I'm yeah. Beautiful. And so to see him more, you've got to watch the Chucky yes. Perez show on Uplift TV and, and check out everything he's doing yes, thank and you. watch this guy. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on this Go from two guy. viewers. We want to go to three viewers. How about so that? So that's the goal. Maybe yeah. three and a half. Yeah. We love you, Chucky. Keep on <laughs> going so and flowing, brother. Thank you. God, thank bless, you. You. God bless, God bless you. you. Thank you for making us laugh. God bless you. The Chucky Perez Show. This September, late night has never been this funny. incredible guest. This lady has touched my heart. I've been really looking forward to interviewing her. Her name is Catherine Parker from Jacksonville, Florida, originally, and she has just finished a book. Is it out yet? It comes out June the 25th. June 25th, Northern Lights. You'll see it on the screen, Northern Lights. Your journey Welcome, Catherine. I'm just Kathy. jumping into your, I mean, Kathy, <laughs> yeah. Kathy Parker, sorry, <laughs> Kathy Parker. Your story just really shook me. As my assistant, we're driving here, and my assistant's reading your bio to me. I'm like, honestly, wow. it moved Thank me. You. Thank you. I mean, can I preface? Can I tell them a little bit? Absolutely. All right. What she has done to help these people, well, I'm going to let you tell it. I don't need to tell your story. Okay. All right. How did you get inspired to do Northern Lights? Just tell okay. them. I'll let you tell them what it's all, all right. about. I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll try, to, try to tell it in, in a in quick way. In two minutes. Yes. 
Okay, well, my husband is a football coach. He's a former NFL player. And uh, all of our children, all four of our children, took after their dad, and they're all athletes. And we were very blessed in that way. Uh, we shared that talent a lot. That was our ministry, is, is really having boys over to our home and, and feeding them and coaching them. As all a that football kind of thing. coach, yeah. I, I you was, probably was, always had a house full. That's right. Right. And, um, but anyway, the impact. We were hugely impacted by sports in our family. And one day, uh, Sunday, we were getting ready for church, and my children were like, Mom, Dad, you got to come see this. And it was an ESPN special outside the lines, and they were doing a special on a community, the most northern American settlement, Barrow, Alaska, and how they had a huge problem with kids dropping out of school, especially their, their young men, and a huge alcohol problem and suicide. In Alaska. Suicide. Yes, yes. And so they had asked the kids, what could we provide that would interest you, keep you in school? And overwhelmingly, they said, well, if we could have a football program. Well, football had never been played north of the Arctic Circle, and this was 300 miles. How sad. On the they present. never had that. No, no, they never had that. You can't even grow grass there. You don't even have a football field there. And, um, and the closest team is 500 miles away. And again, no roads going into this community. So the cost would be extreme. And didn't you say... You were touched because looking at it on television, right? Yes. You saw this Alaskan football team playing on the hard gravel. Yes, they were playing on gravel. They were and getting playing all on cut gravel. Up and they and to yes, make their football their ankles. lines, yeah. it was with flour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this lady's heart was touched. I mean. Really, you yeah. saw the need and you filled it. Well, I, I saw the need, and um, it was one of those things that you know really did tug on my heart. And what could I do? You know, I was—I yeah. had four teenage kids. You know, I was working full time. I was like, being a coach's wife and and doing all the things that I could do just yeah, to four make children. Our, yes, to make our family, you know, go around. But the Lord reached out and Absolutely. said, "You are the one to help these boys." Yes, and yes, and it just so happened that my husband was putting in an artificial turf field in our area. And it was like the Lord said, if you need that for your children, how much more did they need it there? Wow. And so I announced it to my family after church. I said, God showed me something. We're going to raise the money and we're going to teach this team how to play football. And it was a it and was what a miraculous. Year was that? that was in 2007. 2007. Yes. So we brought the team from Alaska. We brought them to Jacksonville, Florida. They stayed in our homes and what? they practiced with us for a week what? to learn what it was like to be a student athlete and learn the game. And your husband coached them? Yes. Yes. And then you provided the beautiful artificial <laughs> turf for them the in field. Alaska. Well, it, it it wasn't that easy. My my son when I told my, wow. my family what I wanted to do, my son said, "Mom, that's impossible. There's no roads going into that place and and he was exactly right it was an impossible task but only God and we did a this press conference. This was a God thing yes. no doubt about yes. it. Yes we did a press conference in February of 2007 and by August 2007 six months later they were playing on a beautiful artificial turf field 650,000 pounds of products had to be shipped into a place that has no roads into it they went by by tractor trailer and through this to one <laughs> girl this one woman's vision now every student every is, is there just oh, yeah. one football okay, field so, or was this the beginning of many okay there's been many throughout the state because of the success so i need to tell you this success okay during this time that they've had this program now they don't have any kids dropping out of school the whole town has been changed there's hope less just drugs totally, less alcohol yes, because totally now they have the community something. and in 2017 they won the state championship Wow. in football and we thought oh it can't get any better than this and then they won an academic award for having the highest GPA for you're their amazing. football team. You're amazing. You're <laughs> amazing. They're telling me we have to wrap it up. I want to talk to you for hours. Listen, what you're doing for others, what you're making Thank happen you. for others, Thank you. God is going to continue to bless you Thank and your you. future and your life, your family. Thank, Thank you, you for your heart. Thank you, Lee. Thank How you. can they watch Northern Lights? Where can they okay. purchase your book? Okay. All right. The book will be out. You can pre-order it right now uh, on several several different avenues. Harper Collins is, has the book. And okay. It's uh, Northern Lights by Kathy Parker. 
And by then Kathy Parker. The movie will start filming this summer. Oh, you're doing so, a movie yes. about it too. We didn't have a chance yes. to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so, have you already cast your movie? Or? No, that will be coming soon. Okay, I think soon. you need Lee Benton in it. I th think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, God bless you and everything that you do, sister. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for who you are and Thank what you. you're doing. Thank you and for an opportunity. Wow, amazing. It's Thank been you. a blessing. Get her book, Northern Lights, and pray Thank for you. this Kathy Parker and everything she's doing, and her husband, yes. to help others. Yes. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Hi, I am here with two incredible people, Jay and Sophia Lyons. They both have such a, a background in music, producing, writing, directing. They are wearing many hats in Hollywood, and I am just so proud of them because this movie that they just finished called The Long Goodbye is a must-see. And I'm going to let them tell you all about this incredible film. But before we touch on that, so both of you are singers, right? I'm not much of a singer, but she's an amazing singer. She has theme songs she's the singer. on TV shows, oh. major networks, and a lot of, you can hear her music in a lot of popular TV shows. But Jay is an amazing producer and a songwriter. And you're the songwriter, so that's your music end of it. Exactly. So now, do you write some songs for Sophia as of well? Of course. I wrote the theme song of this show, this movie, it's called I'll See You Again, and it talks about when someone goes to heaven, that's not mm. all, that we'll, we'll see them again um, in heaven, and we'll know them and be able to, to you know, have fellowship with them. Yes. So I wrote a song called I'll See You Again and she sings it in the movie. Okay, I'm losing it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're I, I, they have <laughs> tissues that they gave me right before the interview called The Long Goodbye and I said I'm going to hang on to them because I'm going to need them because my mother passed away with Alzheimer's and it was a very long, long journey. And so there you did it, Jay. Are you happy? Uh, I'm my sorry. Mascara run, Sophia. You still look but, beautiful. Uh, thank you. Run. I want everybody to see the long goodbye because you said, now, no one in your family was impacted with this. No one in your family had it, praise God. But because others, many others, do you want to tell them what inspired you sure. to do this film? So I'm a TV producer and I produce uh, docu-follows for major networks like MTV, CBS, TLC. Um, or reality shows, but I, people have a bad opinion of reality shows. Do so. you want to talk about any of those reality um, shows? Talk about the 600-pound life. We, I did my 600-pound life. I've seen that. I think everybody has watched and gotten addicted to my 600-pound live. That's Jay's <laughs> show. He's he's produced many shows. Yes. So um, I had wanted to do a show about people dealing with end-of-life issues because as a Christian, I felt like, well, we have something to offer. We have hope. And although we may be sad, um, we do have the hope of heaven. And that's not talked about in our world at all. So I had right. always wanted to do a, a show about people suffering and even dying. So a friend of mine introduced me to Kara on Facebook. And Kara was just... A mother of four, she wrote a blog. She Kara a, Tibbetts. Yes, she was a pastor's wife, but she was suffering and dying with cancer. And she allowed us to come in and film her journey. It's incredibly raw. It's basically a Christian uh, version of like a reality show of the, her end of life. And she's, ex and, I mean, is that right? Yeah, I think what makes the film unique is that it, it's kind of like a patchwork quilt. Mm. So a lot of people contributed to the film, including Kara herself. Wow. So she is telling her story in real time with the viewers as she's journeying to... That's amazing. There's nothing like this. It is riveting. Nothing it's like riveting. This. It, it's it's self-shot. So, so it she a, wanted you to tell her story as she is transcending, basically, into her paradise. It's such a delicate subject that... Um, a lot of people close the doors, and understandably so, but Kara opened her life and said, I want to share and give this as a gift to people who are suffering or know how to suffer. Because a lot of times we don't know what to say or what yeah, to do. Yeah. And we, you, you dealt with that mm. like to where it's, Very oh my gosh, how do we handle it? The long goodbye. So Kara showed us not only how to die, but she showed us how to live which wow. is the preciousness of time. So this movie is actually, even though it's sad, um, it's hopeful. Wouldn't you say? I would say it's very helpful. It's giving and, people and insight on yes, what it's, to it's, expect that it doesn't have to be right. doom and gloom. No. Because exactly. if they know Jesus, they have heaven to look we forward to. We should be hopeful for that. Yeah. And not that we want to yeah. talk about it all the time and yeah. fixate on it or think about right. it. But what, what she did for me personally, I had had very bad experiences with death personally. So all the closest people to me that died were sudden and 
I wasn't a believer at the time, and I don't really know if they were either. And so mm. my previous experience with death were just very traumatic for me. So I really, when I became a believer, I just had no good examples of what it looked like to die well. And I really never hoped for heaven. It was almost something like, it's like inevitable, we all die, but let's yep. not talk about it ever. Yep. Ever, ever want to talk about it. It was scary. So when I met Kara Tippett, it was the first time I met somebody so willing to share in that journey with someone that she barely knew. But I felt like she was instantly my best friend. And she makes everybody feel that way. Um, wow. So and this is a documentary. Yes, it's true a story of a woman. I, I don't say dying. A woman passing. A right. woman that's just going to be passing. That's and really that's amazing that she gave you a peek and the green light to come. <laughs> with her on this journey. There's nothing like it. It is very unique and it's it's hopeful, it's inspirational. She makes jokes. So it's not a it's not a So um, it's not like a real tearjerker sad. It is. It, it is. It is. <laughs> I am just saying He's trying he's trying to <laughs> make me not have to use my tissues here. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, Kara was hopeful. Um, she it wasn't she said I would have never chose this story, but I'm gonna be faithful in the story that God has given me. She actually also says that her story is still good. And that took me a couple of months to kind of grapple with independently. So did you like, shoot this in Colorado? Yes, where Colorado and San Diego. They this had their last the Valentine's Day together that we got to be with them on. God bless the both of you. Yes, absolutely. And to do this project together. It's a tool. It's a ministry tool. I feel like people watch wow. it and they're changed and it helps them with their grief, with their suffering because Kara did it so well. So she helps everyone who watches it. So if anybody is hurting or suffering or knows somebody who is, this is a perfect opportunity to share this film and just kind of learn. So where can they see the long goodbye? Uh, absolutely. Thank you for asking that. Uh, Amazon, iTunes, our website, caratippetsdocumentary.com. Okay. And anywhere you can buy digital um, films, you can find the long goodbye, the Kara Tippett story. You've got to check this out. You need to see this film. Support these two people, Jay and Sophia Lyons. They're shaking and moving in Hollywood and everywhere. <laughs> God bless you. Thank, Thank you for thank your you. time. Thank and you. I know great success to both of you on this film. Thank you so And hopefully much. you're just opening the eyes of many to see it doesn't have to be so bad awesome. at the end, right? Exactly. Thank you. Thanks for thank having you us. Thank you for highlighting that. And thank, thank you. you for watching. What if instead of being angry at life, what if you learned something of love today? I really want to encourage you to watch this documentary. It's amazing the impact she's had on so many people's lives. Why is it that we withhold love? Why? That's my mama's kiss to you. It was the most sobering, sad moment of our life. I don't know why this is happening to our family. I, I think it's my calling to just live faithfully. I want to be able to share this story that suffering isn't a mistake and it isn't the absence of God's goodness because he's present in pain. So ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome Kara Tippetts. When did you decide you were going to actually write about this and say, here, let me tell the whole world my story. <laughs> let me overshare. I wanted to know who this woman was. I wanted to know her story. I wanted to know, <laughs> it was like Kara had the secret. So when people ask about your dying, obviously it's mixed with sadness, but it's just such, there's just such beauty in it all too. I think Kara and I both understand that deep suffering, painful suffering, stretches the capacity of the soul. The weight of her life was huge. She had this impact, and um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to know her. It was very important to Kara that her story would be stewarded well. I'm thrilled that this documentary does exactly that. I feel like I'm a little girl at a party who's, whose dad's asking her to leave early, and I'm throwing a fit. 
I'm not afraid of dying. Um, I just don't want to go. And we always like to bring every episode to a close with our fabulous Victory Road RSVP prayer. And God told me a while back that if you want to be guaranteed a seat in heaven, like any event here on earth, you have to RSVP to any place special. Even every wedding, you know, uh, special restaurants, banquets, dinners, you have to RSVP or your name's not written on the guest list and there's no reserved seat and you just don't get in. So if you're not sure that your name is in God's big book in heaven, just say a prayer with me. Let's call God and RSVP your invite to heaven right now. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins as I forgive all those who sin against me. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for me and arose for me so that I can spend eternity with you. Please put my name in your book and reserve me a seat as I follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we'd sure love to hear from you. You'll see the info on the screen, leadbenton.org. Contact us. Let us know what you think of the show. And we really, really appreciate your support. Any donations at all that you can send, you see the information on the screen to help us keep this wonderful show on the air and spreading the good news in victory stories across the world. Thank you and God bless you.